So areas of talents on the offense, linemen, receivers, running backs, quarterbacks, and a coach. The five pieces of what puts together an offense. The areas of talents of your players, size, speed, aggressive, attitude. And here's where we're going to bring you in. Throw me, some, throw me some talents of your players that you have, that you see on a daily basis. Quick. What? Quick. Quick. Any more? Attitude. Attitude. What was it? Attitude. Attitude. <clears throat> Any other ones? Movement. Movement. Good. Smarts. Smarts. There's one. We're getting there. We're up to four. I do this every every pregame with my with my kids too. My pregame speech is the input coming in from them about what's going on. Um, pick a topic and they they feed off of it. So. Um, I left some of the ones off that I generally, I think, are, are big ones there, too. Strength, mental aspect, and, yes, play calling. The understanding of what goes on on the field. Understanding of what's going on around them in that type of a situation. Um, we'll get to a little, we'll touch on a little bit more later down in the presentation, but um, I'm a type of coach that I feed off of what my players are telling me. If I got someone, if I got a lineman, I got... Wide receiver running back to someone else that says, hey, I can do this. We'll modify the offense. We'll modify the play to utilize that. All right? And that goes with the smarts. And we can touch on that a little bit, too. So here you go. More interaction for you. Pick an offense or picture your current offense that you have. All right, get that in your mind, get that set, get the players that you have, get the players that you had, get the players that you have coming up. And start to think about, you know, what would I be able to do to, to integrate that. Uh, this is our base offense in Cedar Grove. Uh, a lot of call it a pro, pro spread. I always call it the power pistol spread. Um, I love this type of offense. Um, I kind of stumbled upon it when I became a head coach. I was generally a run first type, type coach, but this gave me an opportunity to be able to Utilize some of the weapons I had coming up in my system. So uh, basic offense like the, or base, basic set like this allows you to run, throw, stuff like that all at the same time. It also allows you to make a lot of modifications to be able to counter defense and stuff. But obviously this isn't about me trying to get you to run an offense like this. This is about me trying to get your offense and your mind to be able to help modify what you can do to make your offense better. Um, here's our stats for the last three years that I was uh, that I've been the head coach there. So you can see the discrepancies in I should say discrepancies, probably a harsh word, but the differences in our stats. Um, and a lot of this is based off of how I, how the offense was ran and how the offense was portrayed to the talents of the players that I had. Um, obviously, probably one that stands out is the 2006 runner up one. That stat right there. All right. To give you a hash on 2015, we had two running backs that were 200 pounds, could run, bulldoze, do everything they wanted. Basically, it was a tough run. So I said I ran the ball. It was a lot more of it. Our wide receiving core was young, and our quarterback was young at the time. Didn't quite have the experience. Kind of built that into it. They left. That crew left in 2015, and of course, my communities go, what are we going to do? We can't run football anymore. We don't have this. We don't have that. We'll modify it. We've got some stuff coming up. So obviously these stats, uh, the passing stats there were pretty, I think 59 touchdowns still still stands as a record. Um, I think the receiving record got broke this year, but um, just to show that. Then we go to this year. All right, you come off the stats of 2016, and of course my communities go, oh, what are we going to do? They're gone. We, we can't run them. We can't throw the ball. We can't do this anymore like that. Uh, what we had was we had a quarterback that was playing fullback and wide receiver on the 2016 team that could throw the ball a mile and like to run football at the same time. So we actually kind of leveled things out a little bit more. We rushed more, primarily because of him. He had almost 700 yards rushing himself, but he could also throw the ball, but we became a more 50-50 type team. So uh, based off that type of personnel, <laughs> I mean, there's how we modified our, our teams at that point. So just to keep those in mind as we go through the uh, each position when we do that. 
It all starts up front. Offensive linemen. Talents of an offensive lineman. Your med mental aspects. What can they handle? You know, how much do you throw at them? How much do you? You don't want to confuse them, right? Yeah, I see someone laughing already. The per the uh, person that the perception of a big offensive lineman used to be slow, kind of not right ahead. Our guys are probably the smartest ones on our field, believe it or not. Our, our grade point average across the line is unbelievable. But we are also very lucky with our with our mental part of it is that we use the same our youth program, program starting in fifth grade uses the same blocking scheme as we do so it's drilled into their heads at that point. But we have a dive blocking scheme and we have a trap blocking scheme. And depending on the type of players that we have in that is depends on what type of we lean on more than others versus that. Size and speed. A lot say well size is really not a talent. But to me it's a God given talent. Alright, you can't size is important. I mean it's great to have. So um, big and strong, small and quick. Generally with us, we like to have our big and strong uh, linemen sitting at our tackle spots and our small and quick at our guards. We like to pull, we like to bulldoze at the same time, but sometimes we can't do that. Um, our state team, their line, the line was all small and quick. I think we had one at 205, everyone else. My center was 145 pounds on that state team. But he, he was a good wrestler, he understood leverage, he understood staying low to the ground, stuff like that. So um, we really needed him to pass block. You know, we knew that he wasn't going to move. I mean, the kid from Amherst that was six, six, three hundred pounds. You know, we knew he wasn't going to move him, but we needed to make sure that he could shield him. So <coughs> it, that modified what we wanted to do based off of that type of, of upset. And even in our conference, we saw sizes like that. Um, the big and strong type of your lineman. A couple of years ago, 2011, I think we had 250 across the board and strong. <laughs> And that team, that's all we did was blast. You know, that was our, that was the the uh, the style that we ran based off of what we could do with those, those linemen. They couldn't pull. You know, they weren't fast enough to get out there and pull. So everything was generally inside the tackles. Now I see it all the time in in kind of in my conference and some other films that I watch and stuff like that. You see teams that generally try to continue to do things even though they don't have the caliber of athlete to do it. Um, I remember seeing some a team try to pull out a tackle and stuff like that, and he didn't make it out past the defensive end. You know, why do it, right? So uh, use that type of a uh, if he's big and strong, use that type of a uh, to be able to blast and modify it, your type of offense to run behind him instead of being on that side. Attitude. <laughs> These are all the fun. Are they mean? Are they nice? Are they crazy? All right. How many of you have seen all three in your in a kid? Right. Yeah, those are the fun ones that you get to have. That you get to have though. Um, but we will allow, if we know that there's an area of concern, we will change what they do to match that area of concern on, on against the defense. Okay, they will. We will be able to. I'm trying to think of a proper word for it without sounding mean about it, but um, I'll just say that. I won't go into that type of a, a discussion, but um, we'll use that type of a crazy kid to be able to beat that defensive person mentally. All right, if we know that that type of a has an advantage on something like that, that's a way that you can start to call your plays, you know, use your offense to be able to start to take advantage of that person across the, across the line of scrimmage. So, um, from the list, from what we, what we talked about, what are some of the aspects of, of a lineman that you would see that you would modify your offense around? Anyone? What would you do or what could you do? I think we, at some points, we were one hand, like we only ran the play, we only pulled one guy, we only ran a certain play a certain way. Correct. Yeah, because why run it the other way when we can't do it the other way, you know? Correct. And, and we see that quite a bit too. I mean, where the conference that we're in is generally smaller schools, 
They have one, maybe two big stud linemen. They run behind. You, know, you can take advantage of that if, if um, you know, if you don't have a, a defense that will counter that type of a situation. I mean, we see it, so we flop our we flop our defense back to that type of stuff there too. But correct, utilize it. If you got a guard that can pull, you got a guy that can pull. Modify that offense and that adjustment to be able to use him to be able to get on the outside, be able to you know move quicker down the line, stuff like that. Good. Running backs, ground the pound. This used to be what I used to die for. I, I was a big running back fan. I, I coached the running back, still do for the last 18 years. I had multiple all state running backs. Uh, very excited about it. Now it kind of just not an off, fully offensive like that. It just kind of set aside. But uh, the men, mental aspects of running backs. Do I want to be hit? You know that changes how you can modify. You can that will change how. You look at your offense or what type of a play you call and how you can modify that based off of what they're going, how they're going to run the football. You know, if they're not going to, if they don't want to get hit, we had a running back back in 2014, small guy, quick as lightning, but he hated to get hit. So we modified our offense so everything went outside with him. We never ran inside the tackles. Everything we did inside the tackles was all just a scheme. Do you have the ability to change mid-season what you're doing because of injuries? Absolutely. Um, I did that two years ago, actually, where we lost our fullback. And that is actually where my quarterback this year came in. Um, we lost our fullback, broke his arm during the game. Uh, he was a bulldozer type, type style of running back. The uh, one that we brought in, he was able to catch the ball. He was able to... Obviously, run the ball, be aggressive, stuff like that. So, so follow up to that. Do you practice different schemes going into the season, anticipating that that might happen, or do you have to all of a sudden kind of start over? Is it built into your program? It's built in. Uh, usually, right here is most of it. It is a, a change in you know my aspect, which is coaching aspect, is one of the slides as well. Is how to. You know, if I lose him, what do I do then? Do I plug this in here, and now I become this type of it? And it actually happened this year, too. I lost my fullback when we played St. Mary Springs, or my halfback when we played St. Mary Springs, shifted my fullback to my halfback, brought in a bigger fullback on top of it. He couldn't run, or he couldn't break away from anything. And he was two yards in the cloud of dust, but now my halfback was a more robust. We could blast a lot better. So that kind of changed things from being a speed, quick, trapping, full out, you know, we could do anything to being a little more narrow with that type of stuff. So and hopefully that answered. Um, sizes, we even kind of just talked about that, where the small and the quick, get them on the outside. Modify your offense and get them on the outside. You'd be able to utilize their... Uh, quickness to get out, get out there and take that as advantage. Uh, the aggressiveness, we're talking about patience, we're talking about bulldozers. Um, again, make that play call towards that type of running or make that offense based off of that type of running. If you have a patient running back that is you know, not as aggressive, a trapping offense or trapping plays, stuff like that, counters, it all works great. But if you got one that likes to hit and wants to run people over, bulldoze it. <laughs> so I threw this in there. I think this is a, a great reminder for especially for offensive coordinators. Uh, calling plays requires ability to use the best utilized player talent levels with the team's offensive scheme. Then modifying the existing plays when needed to give your players the distinct advantage of their defensive counterparts. Um, now that we're through the linemen and we're through the running backs, those are kind of, to me, those are stepping stones until we get to our wide, wide receivers and quarterbacks where we really took off in the Cedar Grove Belgium uh, football program. Um, being able to utilize their skills on the outside to be able to really change it. And, and we start off with the wide receivers, and I actually called them. I actually call them the game changers. Okay, um, a lot can happen 
in a short amount of time based off your wide receivers. Uh, especially that's what I found. We, we do a quick strike. We'll take the shot when we get it. But a lot of that comes from the talents that we have at our wide receiving court. Two years, when, two years ago when we had the state run, um, I had three great wide receivers and they all covered every aspect. Um, even the one out there where it says small and strong. My tight end was 5'6", five, 5'7", five, built. He was, a, like I said, he was in our tight end position. He had great leverage, he understood the blocking scheme, it fit in there. It also, he could also run routes, he could also catch passes. It, it just, I put him in there because that required, that was able for us to be able to change that offense to be able to work to his strengths. Um, size and speed, you go back to looking at the, at that first slide of, of our offense, we will change our offensive schemes. And what, what's the number one way that you can change an offensive scheme? It's obviously by formations. Um, you can see here that the, the formations that we generally run are the base off of what we have. It doesn't change anything, but the formation will modify and give the advantage to match our, to our wide receiver's talents. Okay. Our X wide receiver is generally our best, our quickest and our best route runner. And a lot of times that is because he's isolated. We can isolate him in our play calling and in our offense to be able to utilize almost a third of the field to himself. Um, a lot of it happens even in our, in our base sets. If we go to a twin set over here, that shifts that safety over a little bit that gives him that whole type of, whole type of uh, that side of the field to utilize. Um, our Z receivers, are bigger, stronger, taller. A lot of it because there's a lot of congestion when they're in this side of the field there too. So we will set them as, as at, at the Z spot. Our Y, like I said, our, our Ys are always been small. They're the best blockers out of our wide receiving core. Um, quick, good hands. <coughs> so take these, think about this, think about, you know, I asked you earlier to be able to take your offensive picture of your offense. Now picture you're changing your offense or changing a formation based off of your kids that you have, your players that you have, and how you can utilize that to be able to work for their advantage. Uh, getting back to the wide receivers, their mental aspects. You know, this, this is huge for us. This is where we look into uh, modifying our offense based on what they see. All right, I trust my guys. They'll go out there, they'll see where they're line, where the defense is lined up. They'll run routes based off of what they can do. You know, we talk about, we always talk about breaking. We always focus on, one number one thing that we focus on with our wide receivers going against quarterback is what we call breaking their hips. Even if the play is not coming to them, obviously, run play, stuff like that, they're still going and they're testing to see what type of a play that they can break their hips on. Does everyone know what, what I mean by breaking their hips? If a quarterback is back pedaling, and you've got him going on a fly route, and if he breaks his hips to go this way, then you know you can go back inside this way. If he breaks his hip this way, then you know you, can, you have the outside, you have the advantage on it. Um, that mental aspect of that athlete being able to come to the sideline or telling my quarterback, I can do this. I can get this guy at this on this route. All right. Based off of that for all the formation that he is running. Just a quick question. Uh, see, you have considerable amount of success on the offense, like the night from Doug, right? How do like, players handle it mentally when someone can match up to them skill-wise, or when you get in those games where it's a dog fight? How do you change how you dress your team? What we will actually mod again <laughs> modify the offense. I was going to get to that a little bit in the, in the play calling, but. Yeah, the, the later you go out in the playoffs, you see better caliber athletes. We see pre you start to see press locks. You see faster athletes, stuff like that. We will actually start to change offensive formations, and let, if they say if they lock, if they're not blocking wide receiver or cornerbacks on, we'll take this X and put them over here. 
And our state run, our Z was our best wide receiver. He was tall, he was quick, he was fast. Uh, the reason why he did play X was because he could block better than the Z could, or the X could. So he played over there because we have a we have a formation and we come in tight here. We like to run out of that. So and we can still pass over there. But we'll flop sides. We'll we'll tell them, you know, okay, you two switch. You know, the way that we call our offensive passing schemes, our passing routes, we got a formation and a set of numbers. And our numbers read, you know, one, four, <laughs> seven, five, seven. What you do know. you see for defensive fronts once they are? This 31, 11, 22. What gives you this? I'm a defensive guy. Right yeah. So I'm looking at this. I'm trying to dissect. I already wanted this. I'm wondering what do you, are some things that? Lately, we are seeing more of a 3 4 uh, in out of our conference. And I think the reason for that is lack of size in our conference, lack of numbers in our conference. Um, although I generally a lot of it from 3 4 to the 4 4 is one of the two. So. Um, this really allows you to, uh, to spread that out as well. Um, I mean, give me an example. What you would? Oh, I'm just thinking. I mean, you just see usually a three tack away from your that end. You're going back to the quarterback, and then you close it down. You teams to play too high versus you, like less, like the bottom line formation. Um, and most teams just play too high over the top end. Most in this type of formation in this bottom left here, most teams for me will stack the box. Um, they like to know, or I, I like to run out of this, but I also bait them in this. I'll throw, I will throw a quick pitch out here, a blast, and send these guys on flies. Uh, we've been, I don't think anybody in here is around from our neck of the woods, but we've been known to blast for two straight games, and we exchange two films. Well, I'll blast in the two hole for two straight games. Then lead off that third game that we're there watching with the same formation and fly that guy. They come up with flying one for one. So we take advantage of, of him being my fastest, being able to get out in the open. Good question. Good dialogue there. I like that. Any questions? Anything else like that? So like I was like I was touching on where. Those man, mental aspects of the talented wide receiver being able to understand what he can and cannot do against a defense or against a player like that um, is huge. There's a lot of times, there's actually a picture I'll, I'll show later on there too. Um, actually, this play right here, just three sequence, was that scenario I just told you about. Uh, we, got it. we ended up getting them sucked up on it. Well, um, to be able to Be able to match that play calling and be able to rely on them to be able to help you uh, advance your offense and modify your offense is huge. Our quarterback, like I mentioned earlier, uh, earlier when we were looking at stats like that, um, we kind of had two different type of quarterbacks in, in our in my three years. Uh, our obvious, our first two one and one that went to state like that. He was a pocket passer. He didn't like getting hit. He didn't like running. He was 6'4", 210. 6'3", 210. He could have. He could have ran people over if he wanted to. Didn't want to. I, I think it was all up here. I can say that because he was my nephew. <laughs> I think he was. But uh, he was a great leader and he was a great communicator when it came to it. He read defenses. He could see things like that. His talent to be able to understand what a defense was doing based off of... Um, <coughs> Us off looking at a safety or looking at what we can do to shift it off or, or modify our offense, our formations, or anything like that, put someone somewhere, was unbelievable. Um, I don't know if you if you watched the All-Star game on TV or anything like that this year, they talked about the hectic rocket offense where a lot of that was him. And a lot of that, I, I you know, I trust you. Let's go. I'll give you a formation. I'll manage the clock. I'll manage the time. Manage the uh, down and distance. Go for it. Now, if you got that type of a talented uh, quarterback and you can allow him or feel comfortable enough for him to be able to do that, that also gets respect back from your quarterback as well. I mean, they trust you. And I did it with this year's too. Granted, he didn't quite have the experience and all that type of stuff, but he could read it. 
What we like to tell our quarterbacks is, is that once you're done with your play fakes, your stuff like that, you turn around and you look at your safety. Find out where your safety ended up. If he was a run, was he in on the tackle? Because if he was in on the tackle, we're, we can go long. We can change that. You know, we'll, we'll modify it. We'll modify a play to send someone long. Um, we tell them, you know, you're probably thinking, well, why not stay in the whole defense? You don't have to. You got wide receivers that can tell you what your quarterbacks are doing, and that's how we rely on that. We rely on those wide receivers going back there, their mental aspect to be able to understand what's going on with them on that side. So it really kind of shortens things, keeps it simple for the quarterback, stuff like that. So uh, the mental aspect of being a leader and a communicator of what they see going on in the field and relaying it to you, and then the communication back with your quarterback to be able to allow them to be able to suggest plays. Um, even if you don't like the fact that you can just say, okay, go ahead, pick a play. If, if you don't feel comfortable with that, listen to them, process it in your mind, and then put them in that position for them to succeed. So, uh, size and speed. Uh, the last two years for us, like I said, we had a big, strong kid, uh, but he didn't like to get hit. He was a pocket passer, he scrambled around, stuff like that, found a wide receiver open some way, somehow. Uh, he could have thrown the ball 60 yards, so you didn't have to worry about it. Uh, he could always all, you know, all throw most coverages and stuff like that. But, um, you know, this year we had a smaller one, a little bit quicker. He was still our fullback. He's still built. But this kid wanted to run. So he ended up, we ended up putting in a whole different uh, running scheme with our quarterbacks. We trapped, we powered, we blasted, we super blasted. All of that type of stuff with our quarterback. Which accounted for, he had like 700 yards on the ground this year as a, as a quarterback as well. You know, I, I don't think you see that type of numbers unless you're running some form of an option out of there. Uh, I had a lot of coaches say that this year's offense was probably one of the toughest that they ever had to defend against in our conference just based off the fact that now we added a quarterback that could run. Um, I mean, you being defense, you had a quarterback that can run, that's a, that becomes a nightmare. So if you have that ability where you have that quarterback to be able to do stuff like that where you can use him in a running game, modify your offense and get him in there. Because it, it works wonders. And I'll be honest this year, our quarterback situation, he graduated, we're getting even, we're getting even smaller, we're getting even quicker. And there's a good chance that our offense is probably going to be based around him, but it's still going to be in the set that we run out of most efficiently. So uh, I'm working on schemes and stuff like that with my offensive line coach right now where we get a chance to keep things simple yet. For our linemen, we don't want to change anything for them. The backs are kind of still the same. But we're going to do a little bit of a wrinkle now with our, with our quarterback coming in. So. Um, Straights, can you throw the ball? How far can you throw the ball? Like I said, our, our, our state quarterback, was he could throw the ball 60 yards. Our quarterback last year was not far behind him. He's one of the top baseball prospects in the state as a pitcher. Um, if you've got a set of wide receivers that have the talent to be able to run past anyone and a quarterback that can throw it that far, utilize it. Um, I know Otto Aspie uses a lot of pass, I believe, in their, in their schemes. I'm sure you could probably you could say the same thing. Um, you know, modify your offensive, your playbook, stuff like that. Like I said, I gave an example that our numbering schemes, our routes and all that are all based off of numbers and not even set plays. So if I have someone that says, if I have that wide receiver or that quarterback that so I can get them on a seven, we'll call the formation and we'll change those numbers. And there's not even a set play. So that way we can go on the fly. Um, Play calling, we kind of touched on that. Uh, a lot of, like, like I said, a lot of the same wide receiver. Uh, in the next slide, you'll see uh, more on, on, on the coach. Um, but the communication between your wide receiver, your quarterback, and your coach, where they can make a decision of what they, if they can suggest something, is unbelievable. Um, trust them. I think in this day and age nowadays where kids are kind of looking to be more involved, have, have a stronger voice, it, it goes a long ways. It really does. I, I've seen that pick up quite a bit. 
uh, throughout my career with, with my quarterbacks is if they can give their input. And then they feel good about it too if it works. You know, if you know it ain't going to work, if they come to the sideline and say, you know, let's do this, and you go, no, it ain't going to work, that's all right, yeah. But uh, you know, generally, if that type of situation comes to me, I'll still I'll modify it. If he says, I want to do this, I'll put that input into my offense and modify whatever that was going to happen at that time with what he wanted to do. So, And we've been very successful with it. Uh, it's been, uh, been pretty good for us to be able to use that type of an aspect. So, and the more and more you communicate, more and more you see their play calling and you understand what they're getting, you get a chance to do it. Uh, we've actually done it in play in, uh, in games where if it's if it's a blowout in the first half, I'll give control over to that quarterback and say, you call it. Let's see what you see. And then he comes to the sideline and he says, I see this, I want to do this, I want to do this. That's what you see or that's what one of your coaches sees. You can work on that type of uh, uh, talent and that type of aspect. There goes the cook, the coach. I put that, put that saying back in there, um, you know, just, just as a reminder. Because the way that that I always call an offense was I will see uh, pretty much if the wide receivers or if my kids won't come to me and tell me what they're seeing, I got coaches that myself will see, will watch type of situations, will call a play to set up another type of play just to see what's going on. So um, it can come in thinking one thing and I'll modify based off of what I see uh, our athletes being able to do or be able to do it. Uh, first level of the playoffs, or, you know, we saw cornerback was starting to creep up on the run quite a bit and stuff like that. We knew that we could get him on, on the one. So um, keep that in mind as a coach, especially as an offensive play caller. Take advantage of, of those type of areas. I see coaches that generally, you know, they're bullheaded in, I want to run this, I want to run this, I want to run this, even if it doesn't work. Same thing, over, 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 and over. And sometimes, <laughs> so uh, take advantage of it. If you if you see something along the lines where that's going to work on, modify that play or those type of plays to be able to utilize that. You know, we've been talking about play calling. I don't know how much more I got to be able to, or I don't know how much more to talk about that. But listen to them, give them a chance. Uh, it, it's it's huge. I, like I said earlier, it's. Unbelievable how much more interaction you will get out of your your quarterback, out of your wide receivers. They like to be out there. Uh, we've always had had kids say, "I enjoy being at practice because I feel like I'm part of part of something. I'm part of being able to make a decision." Our bas our basketball program, kind of iffy, you know, stuff like that. It's a drill sergeant. It's ran this way, and the kids don't like it. You, know, you don't get as much out of your kids as that much. So modify your 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 uh, your coaching styles as well to match that the talents of your kids. So, um, you can see some of the pictures. <laughs> if you ever get a chance to watch film or anything like that of us, or you see it or anything along those lines, if you see this type of a situation going on, expect something. Uh, because that's generally, this was our level three game against Columbus. Uh, he came to the sideline and said, we, the play that we ran, they shot the, we ran a trips one way, they stunted a, the outside linebacker, went out on the, on the flare. He said, the middle of the field is wide open, so we turned around. I have to bring my formations up. This was the formation right here. I mean, we were kneeling there, we were talking about it. We ran him out on a flat this way, and the linebacker went here and left the vacated in the middle of the field. We ended up hitting, we were on our own six yard line, we ended up hitting our C for a 94 yard touchdown. Passed to go up 28 nothing in level three against a team that was supposed to kick our ass. Um, but you know, using that type of communication between your quarterback to be able to modify that offensive play call right there, it's huge.
Any questions, answers, open discussion? How much of this velocity creeps over to the defense? Do you have that same velocity of changing your defenses, fronts? We generally do not change the defensive fronts. Uh, we don't like changing responsibilities of that. Um, a lot of it you'll see here are modifications of on the offense. Really don't affect how the players execute or do something more versus how they execute something. You get what I mean? Um, defensively, I mean obviously if we have more of a run team, we will modify a defense to be able to move up, stuff like that. I give my defensive coordinator free reigns. If he wants a, we played, <laughs> we played Springs are in week four, stuff like that. We got hammered on. We changed the complete defense just to see how, what we could do to do, to, and be able to use that even later down the road. We thought, hey, this might be able to give us a, an advantage. We might be able to, nothing was giving us advantage uh, that game. Uh, we ended up turning around and using it in level two of the playoff game because we were able to modify our defenses, put our players in different positions, stuff like that to match whatever our defense was going to throw at us. So. Um, you mentioned a little bit about like your passing tree, it, it sounded like that you used, but how do you like tag plays and formations to make it simple for your offense or like for your, your players yet also be able to adjust on the fly? So if we call just five of one of our, our, our sets, if I call a play, I'll say, this is what I call trips, I'll say trips right, one, four, seven, eight, all right? Left to right, he's got a one row, he's got a four row, he's got a seven, he's got an eight, all right? And the way that my passing philosophy works is we divide the field up into in sections, and generally, in trips, we're gonna we're gonna divide this up into four sections across. In these singles, like here, we're gonna divide it into three sections. We're gonna attack minimum three quarters or two thirds of those zones at any given time. So that's how uh, when we start to call those numbers, you know, like our one route and and here's another thing: our one route, our three route, our five route, seven route, all break to the left. So the wide receivers can, and, and quarterbacks are all on the same page. Took us one practice to learn it. We ran through everything like that. It was pretty good. They knew it from there on out. Two, four, six breaks to the right. So, you, know, you can see here we got, you know, if we ran everything over this side, it would shift the safety over. Uh, if they're playing in cover two, then there's going to be a safety here. But we would work on him coming to say, hey, I can break my quarterback's hips. I can break them in or out. So he'll come to the side and I'll say, okay, seven is, is our fly route, eight is our skinny post and stuff. So, okay, we'll call it trips right, eight routed, you know, eight, seven, two, six over that side, and then Tom skinny post, break his hip with skinny post. And we've been in this situation quite a bit where we've been in fourth down, stuff like that, and that's where we like to go to stuff like that with like that. Um, both New, New Holstein level two, Belders level three games. We're at fourth and fourteen on going for fourth and goal from the fourteen yard lines. And I went to the player. I went to the player. What can you do? You know, you tell me. What What are you going to beat him on? And once he beat, once he told me he could beat him, I trusted him. You know, I modified my offense, modified my play call to match what he could. Do. And what he wanted to do. So, and that goes the same thing with the quarterback as well. You know, if he sees it, you can do it. But, uh, anything else? Anyone else? A little bit early, not too bad. Um, Last but not least, my biggest philosophy, other than having fun, you know, work hard, have fun doing it, is put your athletes in a position to succeed. You know, I, there, there's so many times I see situations where I, I'm like, man, if they would just put him here, can you imagine what he could do? 
in our conference, we know each other real well. We know you athletes from from uh, basketball, from wrestling. You know, the kids know each other constantly. They're all hanging out together. You know, we're five miles apart in most of our towns, stuff like that. So, um, you know, put them in that position to be able to execute and succeed based off of what they can do, based off of their talents. So, my information is down below. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, comments, or anything like that, text me, email me, follow me on Twitter, and send me a message there. Um, if you want to know more about our, our offense, you know, I, can, I can discuss a little bit more about our offense and, and how we... Uh, I, I don't know, are you giving the fourth one, or who's doing the... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna. That's kind of what I was gonna do based off of uh, what I was doing, or what I wanted to talk about about shifting our our defense and stuff like that, and in our formation stuff. But I can explain how we can change our offensive sets and stuff like that, and to manipulate our defenses and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, hope it was good for you. Hope you can at least, like I said, take one thing out of this, uh, use it to your advantage. Uh, good luck next season. Thank you.